Quantum physics, arguably one of the hardest topics to understand. But what if I told you I could explain it to you in seven minutes or less? Now, I know you're calling cat, but just let me cook, all right? Let's say you and your boy stumble upon an electron beam gun while you're walking in the park. As any normal person would, you decide to shoot it at a plate that conveniently has two slits in it, both just a few micrometers wide. After that, you would probably go check the screen behind this plate, and you might think that all the electrons would have landed in the same area. But if you and bro thought that, you would both be mistaken. The results of this experiment would look more like this, where the electrons spread out. However, they would be in areas of higher and lower density. This is because of the beam of electrons would get broken up or diffracted as they pass through the slit, and on the other side, they would emerge as separate waves. As those new waves moved along, they would overlap, creating those high-density areas of electrons. Unbeknownst to you and your boy, you would have just proven that these electrons moved as both waves and particles, something that was only discovered back in 1924. Now, obviously, as any average human being would be, you're probably thinking to yourself, jit trip. Everyone knows that a subatomic particle can't follow particle and wave physics at the same time. To that I say, yes it can, little bro. You see, back in 1920, the goats of what would eventually be known as quantum mechanics pulled up to the function and started theorizing. The likes of Niels Bohr, Erwin Schrödinger, Werner Heisenberg, Albert Einstein, Max Born, and Paul Dirac basically formed what we know today as quantum physics. At this point, you're probably pretty confused, befuddled, and maybe even mind-boggled as to what quantum physics even is. So now, a young jit such as myself is going to do some explaining. Basically, quantum physics follows this equation called the Schrodinger equation. Think of it as the constitution of quantum mechanics. This formula dictates the wave function of a quantum system, which doesn't make much sense right now, but trust me, it will later. The one problem with Schrodinger's equation is that it doesn't really explain what that calculated wave function actually means, and that's where Max Born clutched up. See, the whole deal with quantum mechanics is that things are quantized. In simple terms, this means you aren't figuring out exactly where something will be, but you're figuring out the probability of it being in a certain place. Max Born decided to take Lobro's wave function, represented by the letter psi, and square it. By squaring the amplitudes of this wave function, he flipped the negative part to the positive part of the graph because we all know a negative number squared is now positive. Wink, wink. With this newly obtained graph, Max Born made a probability amplitude graph, which gives the probabilities of an electron being in a certain place at a certain time. This graph is basically the life 360 of quantum physics. It lets you predict where a particle will be. Now I'll give you an example. Let's take this graph, which has two peaks. This graph would imply that the particle has a really high probability of chilling over here and over there. But that would also mean that said particle has some ops in these regions, meaning you would have a tough time catching particles over there. If you've ever heard the saying you can't be in two places at once, well, it's cat. Because as a young jit in particular just proved, you pretty much can be in two places at once, assuming you're in a quantum mechanical system. This graphing thing is called superposition, and it's what allows quantum particles to theoretically be in multiple places at once. Keeping that theory in mind, you and your boy can now start to tackle quantum entanglement. In simple terms, quantum entanglement is when two electrons get into a bit of a kerfuffle. Their waves become mixed up as their functions are superimposed into one big graph. Those two particles are now those two bros that are never seen without each other. And that new graph can be used to figure out where both of them are at all times, 100% of the time, guaranteed. With that probability amplitude graph in mind, this is where Max Born passed it back over to Schrodinger and Heisenberg. Together, they came up with the electron cloud model, which looks a bit different to the Bohr diagram you may have seen in science class. Heisenberg basically said, free my boy electron till it's backwards. And in the end, they ate and left no crumbs. Period. Instead of the electrons going in circles all day, the electron cloud model showed that an electron could basically be wherever it wanted, but it was just chilling in some areas more than others. Now that I've explained the basics of quantization, let's get into what I said earlier about everything being waves and particles at the same time. This absolutely mind-boggling concept is called wave-particle duality, and as the name implies, it shows how everything is both a wave and a particle at the same time. Even you, and of course your bro, are waves. But the thing is, the wave part really only applies to the little bros of physics. That includes atoms, subatomic particles, electrons, and all that other stuff. The thing with the wave part of that is the less mass you have, the bigger amplitude your waves are going to have. So for an electron, those waves are life-changing, but for you, those waves are abysmal and don't really matter at all. This inverse proportionality between mass and the wave function is the basis of Newtonian physics. The reason why all the science bros had such a hard time figuring this quantum stuff out is because we could only study what we saw with our own eyes. Everybody could see and understand Newtonian particle physics because the stuff we could see was too big for the wave function to affect anything at all. 
This is why everybody went nuts when we discovered wave particle duality. Now, Newtonian physics is where Isaac Newton came in with his three laws and F equals MA and all that other stuff, which is the fundamental basics for most of the physics stuff you might know today. There's one big problem with this Newton guy though. While he was a pretty solid player, he was only playing in the G League. You see, these quantum guys meant business, and while Newton was chilling in the mud, the quantum physicists were putting up record numbers in the NBA. Isaac Newton made one huge mistake. He thought that photons were particles, and he could not have been more wrong. Since you and your bro have been paying attention this whole time, you know that a photon is a low bro particle, better known as light. This means that it moves in a wave. In 1924, Newton's awful hypothesis was dunked on by Louis de Broglie in his PhD thesis. He suggested that an electron around a nucleus could be thought of as being a standing wave, and that electrons and all other matter could be considered as standing waves as well. With this, Newton's career was over. De Broglie also came up with his own formula for this, fittingly called the De Broglie relation, and this relation is incorporated into the Schrodinger equation. With this standing wave stuff, now we can see the formation of the outdated Bohr model, in which these different electron layers have different integer numbers of wavelengths. If you're confused, try thinking about it like this. You take the electron wave that we're familiar with, and you bend that thing around the nucleus and protons. But if there's even a fraction of a wavelength left over, and it's not an integer number, then it doesn't form properly. Keep in mind though that a ton of this quantum physics stuff is theoretical, and obviously there's a lot that wasn't covered in this short of a video. Most of this advanced physics that we rely on today are only about 100 years old, so really this could all be wrong. But for now, I'm gonna trust the science bros. In reality though, I'm just a guy who likes science. So if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe.